Alright, so in the last video, we went through and we uh, got the names, alright, prompted the user for names, stored them in an array list, and then recovered those names in this additional for loop that is basically there just for show, basically to show you that those names are in the array list. And we did that by using the player's array list dot size. So however many names we entered, which should be the same as how many number of players uh, we prompted the user for at the beginning of the game. And then we basically went in there and called the names and the scores from those array list. And then they printed out right after we entered the last name. All right, so I kind of got you a little bit ahead, I mean, into the next part, because we do need this for loop, because this is where we're going to call our players. And we're going to say, hey, it's your turn. All right, and then we'll have another for loop within here that will basically play the game. Or, you know, when they roll the dice, it gives them the option to continue rolling, hold, let's... um basically bust out of there if they hit a one it tells them their turns over and stuff so we do need this and like I say I left it as I so that you could see that basically the scopes were different that this I did not affect that I however in this one we're gonna have a nested for loop or a for loop within a for loop and we're going to have to change the value of the inner for loop and me the way I code I just, I'm going to change all these to J. All right, just like that. And as I'm always saying, anytime you make a change, run it and make sure that it still works. So I'm going to go in here, and this time I'm going to use three players. And we'll call these players Brianna, Alana, and Jana. All right, and then it should print them out just like it did before. All right, so this is where I'm going to, like I say, loop through my players. Now, the first thing I want to do is I don't want to keep calling players.get and then J, and same thing with scores.get and J. I want it to be simpler, something that, you know, is just easy for me. So I'm going to change this to name and this to score so that when I call it later on down the road, I can either get the name or the score depending on what I need to access or change. So to do that, I'm going to create a couple variables within this for loop. Now the first one, of course, we're getting it from the player's array. And the player's array, if you remember from up here, is a string and the array list is an integer. Now, you have to type in integer when you do this, but when you get an integer, of course, it's just int. And the only place we're going to use this is within this for loop, and that's why I'm not declaring it up here. All right, so we're going to string name and then int score. All right, just like that. Now I'm going to set name equal to this players.get and then in parentheses J by hitting control X, highlighting it and hit control X. And then it's going to equal control V to paste players.get J. And then I can just change that to name. All right, same down here. I'm going to highlight this, hit Control X to cut it or move it. Go up here and set equals, Control V to paste it. And then over here, I'm just going to use score. All right, now this should work exactly the same way as this down here. And to test it, because I just made changes to my code, and once again, make changes, test it. You don't want to get like 100 lines of code and then try and figure out where it's all at, even though it does kind of make it easy because it usually tells you where it's at. All right, so 
We'll do two and we'll do three and we'll do the same names. Brianna, Alana, and Jana. And it still works. All right, so that part's good. Now, as I said before, I want to loop through these players. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to have a stopping point or I want the player to enter something. And they're going to be either entering an R for roll or an H for hold. So the first thing I need to do is get a character or a single just letter or whatever. All right. And the way we do that is you're going to do char, which is the type, and then set it to whatever you want. I just set mine to C. All right. And then down here, we're going to actually... Let the user know, so we'll do whoever's turn it is or whoever we're on, which we're getting, if you remember, from J. So on the first pass, it'll be zero. So in this case, it would have been Brianna. So we're getting her name, and then we're going to do comma, it's your turn. All right, and then I just added a little bit more in there and just letting them know your current score is, okay, now... When they start off, when you first start playing the game, it's going to be zero, of course. But then once you start getting points, which we'll do later in the game, you're going to take those points, and of course we're getting them from their scores, which means we're going to have to put them in there. All right? But whatever they start their turn with, we're going to let them know this is how many points you currently have. All right? And then we're going to prompt them to see if they want to roll. And we're not really going to give them a choice on the first pass because you have to roll at least once. All right? So we need to tell them roll the dice on the first turn. All right, so what I did here, and you can do this, you can, uh, if you want, like, line feeds. So I don't want this line here, roll the dice, to be directly or like one line feed, I want there to be a line feed between it to give me a little bit of space, then you can just do this. Make sure it's a print line. It won't work with a print. Okay, but that gives you a carriage return if you do an empty uh, print line. All right, so then on the next line, I'm telling them roll the dice. So where do we go from there? We have to prompt them for input. Now, you remember I got this char C up here. All right, so we're going to set that equal to, and a char is a single character, all right? So we only want, and we can only put one character in there. If you try to put a string in there, you're going to get a bunch of red squiggly underlines. So let me go ahead and put a string in there. So we'll do a string, and we'll say destiny. And, of course, you see it's red, underline. Well, that could be because I didn't put a semicolon at the end of the line. So if I do that, uh, it's still there. Okay, let me go ahead and do a D, just a D. All right, it's still there. And the reason it's still there is because with a char or a character, the way you basically do that you don't do double quotes you do single quotes so if I put a single quote at the end of each of these it should go away and it does all right and that's going to come in handy because we're going to be comparing what they give us coming up all right but right now we're going to set it equal to sc for our scanner dot next and then parentheses and once again we can't stop there because we only want one character if we stop there now 
you can see that it's going to be underlined. So we need to make sure that it's a single character. And the way we do that in Java and different languages are going to be different. Uh, there's going to be different ways of doing it. This just happens to be for Java. We hit another dot and then the very first one there, and don't get me wrong, I'm not guaranteeing it'll always come up as the very first one. You'll see char at, and then it's going to take an integer value for arg0. So char at, all right, and then we're going to put in 0. And you can see that my little underline went away. Now basically what this means is char at zero, a string is like an array, okay? Or I shouldn't say like an array, it is an array. Like this here is an array of characters, all right? And the way this is set up is that is position zero, then the R is position one, the next one is position two, the O is three, the first L is four, the next L is five. The space is six. You can't forget spaces when you're doing this. But we want the very first character that they enter. All right, and we're hoping it's an R. So what do we need to do? We need to check that. So we're going to check to see if it's an R. And we're going to check that with a condition statement. And a condition statement is basically if something, I want to do this, else, if something else, I want to do that. And then, of course, if it doesn't meet anything, then you can go further on and just say, else, do this, exit the program or whatever. So in this instance, I want to check C to see if it's an R. All right, so we'll go if C, and we'll say equals, and we'll do R, and don't forget, it's got to be surrounded by single quotes. Just like that, and as you can see, my little squiggly line went away. And we'll say or, which is two pipe signs, C is equal to capital R because I don't want it to, you know, it didn't matter to me, I just want an R. And as you can see, I told him a capital R there, all right, but I don't care if it's a lowercase r. I just don't want any other characters. All right, so if C is equal to R, I want to say... We'll just make it simple to start. We'll just say C is equal to R. All right, so we'll go and we'll we'll use the actual variable. So we'll say All right, so basically I'm using the variable, and we're going to say C is equal to C, whatever, you know, whatever we actually type. All right, but if it's not, I want to do something else. So I'm going to put an else in here. And down here, what I'm going to do is if it's not, I'm doing control C to copy and control V to paste. So I'm going to put C is not equal to, and of course, we don't want to say C because C is always going to be equal to C. What we'll do is we'll say R or capital R just like that alright so let me go ahead and run this and it should prompt me for input 
All right, and I probably should say their name, but I'm not going to. Not for now. We're just going to check it to make sure that this is working. And once again, up here, as long as it's R, we can run some code in here because that's what we want so we can start actually building our game. So we'll check this, and if this works, then uh, we'll go ahead and break from this video and move on to the next one where we get a little bit farther into our game. All right, so let's go in here, save it. Of course, our dice, which will be coming up here in the next few videos probably. We'll do three players. We'll go to Joseph. All right, Cherish. And Selena. All right, now it should break because it's going to prompt me for input, right? It's going to prompt me for a character. All right, so Joseph, it's your turn. Your current score is zero. Roll the dice. And it's prompting me for an R, of course. I'm not going to give it an R. I'm going to give it a K. All right. And it says K is not equal to R or R. Then it goes to the next person. Ch uh, Cherish, it's your turn. Your current score is zero. So now I'm going to type in an entire word. I'm going to type in rush just to show you that it's only going to go for that first character. All right, so in this one, since I typed in a K, it went to the else, all right, because C was not equal to R or R. So it went to, the, like I say, went to the else and printed out whatever we typed in is not equal to R or R. All right, so moving on, let me go ahead and we're down here with rush. So it should go to the first part because it will be equal to R. And you'll notice that it's only going to grab that first character because of going to the char at our string. All right, so there you go. R is equal to R. And then, Selena, it is your turn. Current score is zero. And then, you, of course, you can do whatever. T. And T is not equal to R or R. Now, the only problem with this is, once again, we've only gone through each player once. And eventually, we're going to need to loop back based on whether our score is at 100 or not. Okay? And that's something else that we need to add up here. And we'll do that in the next video. But hopefully, you see where we're going with this. And right now, we're just testing the... Uh, the characters that they're entering and if they give us an R we can go ahead and start typing some code in here so that we can go ahead and set up our dice generate a random number form roll them and get those numbers all right so stick around like I say we're we're getting there I don't know exactly how many videos this is gonna take but uh, I'm pretty sure I can do this in under a hundred lines of code all right, and look at us. We're already up in the 50s. Oh, I'm sorry. Technically 61. All right, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.